Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That means it's time for another live stream. Today is Monday, April 10th, 2023. We are one week away from Boston, everybody. Hopefully you guys are ready and you're in the taper. I went for my run today and uh, felt like kind of good, kind of bad. So I feel like I'm exactly where a person is supposed to be one week out from a big marathon. Um, before we get too much further into the marathon talk, let's say hi to everyone listening to the podcast, the audio only version. Um, hopefully your shakeout runs are going the right amount of good and bad. Cause you know, if they went too well, that'd be alarming too. And if they went too bad, that would also be alarming. So hopefully it's just right in the middle, the right level of good and bad for you guys. And everyone watching this on YouTube later after the fact, welcome to the number one podcast to have on in the background if you're an industry person and trying to figure out how many bagels and donuts to order for the shakeout on saturday or sunday you're in the right spot all right let's see who we got in the chat frank is reminding us that it's one week and he wants to know are the boston runners going to take all of your gels rely completely on the gel tables or some combination where you take a couple and plan to get more as you go along for me i think that i am definitely going to pack all my own I'm not going to rely on any of the tables because, um, you know, like for example, in Tokyo, the last aid station, I was planning on getting some of the Picari sweat from that last aid station. And I just couldn't get over in time without it making like a big deal of it, you know? So like just to avoid all that, I'm going I'm to pack all my own. So that's, that's, that's where I'm at. Stephanie says, I'm not running Boston this year, but took the day off from work so I could watch it live from home. Oh, that's exciting. And Mast Runner says... Look at this. Look at this mask. That's on here. I can't point to it because my thing, the box is in the way. Here we go. Mass Runner says, let's go, Boston Marathon a week, people. Awesome. Um, all right. Let's see. Let's see who else got in the chat here. We've got um <laughs> Martha says, uh, Kel, I felt kind of bad today on my run. It's normal. Good for you, keeping it super easy. See, there you go. It's got it. It's if it if it went too well, I'd be I'd be worried, you know. Uh, and Ryan, I run a beer says, cheers, y'all. I'm absorbing everyone's Boston excitement to get me amped up to start marathon training again. All right. That's good. That's good. That's a good way to kind of like take in the energy. That's, um, definitely there's a, a surplus of it. There's a lot of Boston marathon energy going on this year. I finding, I'm finding it to be actually a little bit overwhelming personally. I'm having a hard time with it. I got to tell you, but trying to like, you know, take it all in, take in what I want to take in, let everything else kind of just you know, whiz by me, you know, like wind, but it is starting to feel like a lot. So I'm trying to like keep an even keel on everything. Um, all right. Martha says, so it's not tables though for the, for the gels. Yeah. Which is what I would expect. There are long lines of volunteers, a good quarter mile, just standing there handing out the gels like candy. You needn't worry. I ended up with more than I started with. That's interesting. Um, what is a uh, New York? They have that too. Uh, I don't, what's the gel at New York that they hand out? Is it the Gatorade? gel but they have uh or is it another gel i can't remember but i remember seeing like long lines of volunteers they have really nice jackets you know um d chuck says good seeing you at the cherry blossom shakeout awesome good to see you too man it was nice to see you there and alex says yo stoked that espn will be streaming the run basically all day looking forward to it have you decided what shoes you're going to run with yet Alex, that's a good question. I have made a decision, but I'm going to leave that for be a surprise for the flat lay. You know, so when that flat lay video comes out, the real, I'll, I'll, I have a surprise for you guys. I think you guys are going to like it. Or maybe you won't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I think I'm making it a bigger deal than it needs to be, but I'm just going to leave it as a surprise. It's not like, you know, it's not like LeBron announcing who he's going to sign with next. You know, it's just, uh, it's just a shoe that I'm going to wear, but it'll be a fun one. Mm, all right. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't remember. So New York was Honey Stinger Gels in 2021. Who was it? Honey Stinger? I don't know. that. <laughs> I like I like the Honey Stinger waffles a lot, but I don't know that I would want the gels. Hmm. Stephanie says, my relay team won first place at the Carmel Marathon over the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and she says, I get by with a little help from my fast friends. Well, that's, that's so cool. I think more races need to have the um, marathon relay. I just think that's a really good way to get more people in the community involved and kind of like, you know, it's a nice like, kind of like gateway drug for a lot of people. Um, Stephen Lung says the New York City Marathon does Gatorade and science and sport gels. There we go. That's a good one. Mm. 
Steam 76 says, Kopuzi is taking his talents too. <laughs> It'll make sense once you guys see it. Uh, and Tony Macias says, took second overall at a Trail 10K on Saturday. Awesome. It's a nice little cash payout and a great way to start the taper. Excellent work, Tony. Hey, are you still going to be lining up for 255 pace or are you going to do it faster than that? Um, I was watching because uh, then I could find you. My, my bid number is like 55,000 something. 5281, I think. Wave one, Corral six. I'm guessing you're probably somewhere in there too. Um, and I was looking at, uh, everyone's got their like Boston videos coming up, right? And so I was watching Hella Sadib's video, Hella Good. And um, he's taught, he's out, he's been training with NAZ Elite, not full time, but he's been getting some coaching assistance and he's gone out there for at least one trip to do some workouts with the team and stuff and make a couple of videos. And, uh, you know, he did a run. There's two videos I did. One run he did on the course itself. Um, I think he did like 10 or 12 miles of the Boston Marathon course. He was doing an at marathon effort. And I'm looking at his splits and they're in like the 630s, 640s. And then uh, he went out to Flagstaff to join the NAZ Elite team for a workout the following week. And they were doing some repeats. And they then he like asked Coach Rosario, like we're kind of, not thinking about like Boston specifically, what kind of fitness does he think that hell is in right now? And I think this was probably like two weeks ago, you know, based on maybe one or maybe one week ago. So he's like, there's still time to build more fitness. But right now he's like, I think you're in 250 to 255 shape. So I'm like, oh, I wonder where hell is going to be. But I looked at his bib and I don't know if it's because of who, like who got him the bib or what, but his bib is in the, with the charity runners. So I was like, wow, that would have been fun to run with him. But I, I don't know. I just feel like he's a very strong runner. So I feel like the hills are going to be no problem for him. But we'll see. I'm trying to figure out who, you know, who we can get together um, to build a, a little contingent, you know, or like a little mini pack. Because I don't know if there's going to be a 250. There's not like a 255 pace group, right? So like, yeah. Tony says, still looking to coordinate with you for 255-ish. We can sync up and chat more about at the rabbit shakeout. There we go. Perfect. Um, and, uh, where'd it go? Mark says, co we're in the same wave and crowd. Awesome. Yeah. I think there'll be a lot of people in there. So I think it should be fun. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure what the weather's going to be like though in that corral. Like, I don't know how, I don't know how close I'm going to want to huddle to you guys or far. Right now it looks like it's going to rain. Yesterday it looked like it was going to be raining with a side wind. Then this morning it looked like it's going to be raining or potentially raining with a tailwind. Yesterday it looked like it was going to be humid with a headwind. So I think it's just, I don't know. Who knows what we're going to get? I actually think that a light drizzle and a tailwind would be ideal for me. Um, I do like it when it's a little bit wet out for the rain, for the race, you know? And Will Gravel says, yo, popping in to brag a little bit about my PR from the weekend, under 2.30 for the first time. Woo! Call, he called his shot, everybody. Do you guys remember that? Last week, Will came in here to say, I'm calling it. I'm going to go sub 2.30. He went under 2.30. With a 29 to 29 33 in Carmel Stoke. That's fantastic news, man. That's that's incredible. Great job. Great job. Uh, and 23 millimeter roadie says, I'll be running between 250 and 255. I'd love to pull love to pull through as a group. Yeah, I mean, here here I am like trying to collect people to run together. Um, but at the same time, like I like I run hills differently than most people, you know. So like I don't know. I think we can kind of be loosely a group. But um you know, when we go uphill, everyone will probably go a little bit faster than I want to go, but I'll catch you on the downside. You know what I mean? So, so I think that'd be fun. Um, I think that'd be fun to kind of get a couple of people uh, in there together. It might be a big group. I don't know. Um, Kevin Bandy says, what's the race kit for Boston, bro? Are you going to make a vid on it or not? Yeah, I'll make a video for it. I'm going to be running in the bandit kit. It should be arriving soon. I got, I did get a package today. I gotta go to the PO box. I don't know if that's it, but they're sending me like they have Boston specific kit that they made. So I'm gonna be running in that. Um, looking forward to it because I just, I've been running in the other half tights. These just they they're on version two or like gen gen two now for their half tights, and they actually have two kinds of half tights now, one with a lot of pockets and one with not a lot of pockets. So I guess for like the sprinters and the distance runners. Um, I ran in the new ones today and they were really good. 
really like them. Um, so that that should be really a lot of fun. Um, so that's what I'll be running. And I, but I will make a video of it. So like I'll, sh you know, do the shoe reveal and the kit reveal all at the same time. Uh, C Town fans says we have a chance to meet Kipchoge. Oh you know, no, I don't think so. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think that's gonna happen for me. And that's okay. Um, Manor Run says question, Mike. Gonna go to Boston for the shakeout runs and to watch the run. What's the best way to get third person footage of the run for you? Um, I mean, the best way to do it is to do it horizontally. And if you can do it uh, in slow mo, that would be better. Uh, so 120 frames per second, that'd be awesome. You know, I'll post a link to people. I don't want you guys to have to worry about filming me or whatever. But if you do want to send me stuff, um, if you could send it to me like that night, I'll post a. I'll start posting the link in the description like tomorrow. I'll, I'll and I'll edit the description today. I have an upload link that you guys can send me stuff if you guys want to send me footage and stuff like that that way. Um, or and look and and like you know if you're just guys are just cheering too, I'll I'll put some of that stuff in there as well. So I think that'll be fun. Um, Frank says, "Is there an athlete tracking app for Boston?" Yes, there is an a uh, Boston app. I haven't downloaded it. Um, but I've been seeing other people showing like all the different people that they're tracking. So that should be, uh, so that is available just like for like Chicago, for example. And St Steven uh, Saplar says, we'll be running the London marathon next week, hoping to get a sub 430. And we'll be using the A6 super bus to get me around. I feel like that's a really good choice. Um, Cause that's going to be nice and uh, shock absorbing for you, but it's still got that FF turbo. So you get a little bit best of both. So that'll be nice. Good luck to you next week. I feel like, um, I mean, does London always do it like the week after? Some some years it's two weeks after, right? Or is it always the week after? Because I feel like, you know, then London's getting short shrift, you know? It's a world major marathon. Um, and I feel like everyone kind of like dives into Boston and then it's kind of like, oh yeah, London. Which I'm like, mm, I don't know. That doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem right. Uh, DeChuck says, I think I read an article where Casey Neistat was an inspiration for your videos, and I definitely see the cinematography resemblance. Did he inspire you to run too? Um, yeah, that's definitely true. I was watching a lot of Casey Neistat vlogs uh, back when he was daily vlogging. Um, and, um, you know, he is and he isn't an influence because I'm very susceptible to narrative voice. So, like, even when I, if I read a book, like Chuck Palahniuk one of my favorite authors, but like he has a really strong narrative voice. And so like back when I was doing a lot of writing in my spare time as a hobby, like if you read a lot of Chuck Palahniuk, you end up kind of like mimicking the syntax, even if subconsciously. Same thing for Casey. Like I had to stop kind of watching his videos because I found myself like recreating like the stuff that I saw. Um, and that's also where a lot of, but at the same time, that's where a lot of the slow motion from the videos comes from is because Casey did a lot of, time lapses what's the opposite of a time lapse slow motion so that's kind of like where the, the the nugget of that idea came from and then it turns out it works really well for running um but also for the running too because there's for a while where he he was doing daily vlogging and also posting a lot of his running and i was also doing a lot of or getting back into running at the time and so like i was also making vi videos daily vlogging and I realized that running is a great way to fill up some space, <laughs> you know, when you're trying to like crank out a video every day. And so, um, yeah, so it was both an inspiration on that, on a, on a lot of different levels and with the running too. Um, so yeah, that's a great question. Thanks. Um, Daniel Burton says, Kapuzi, I notice you cough a lot when you're running. Yeah. You know, I just think I have a weak stomach in some ways like eating wise like i'm fine i can eat a bunch of food and run and i never i never throw up i won't throw up but i'm always coughing a lot and i just think that there's something about me constitutionally that's a little bit on the weak side i don't know if you want to call it gag reflex or what but just i'm when i was little i used to throw up all the time if i was in the car too long i threw up if i ate too much i threw up um you know i just was like throwing up all the time <laughs> i don't i don't throw up that much now but I do a lot of coughing when I'm running. Um, Smitty Lowe says, can you give me any tips on how you lost the weight? I'm 6'3 and 260. I want to lose at least 20 to 30 pounds. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a, I'm a weight loss expert and I don't really like to talk about weight loss all that much. 
but let me let me give you kind of like some if i can give you some advice smitty the thing that i would say is like it's one thing to like want to lose 20 or 30 pounds right and i'm sure that your motives are really good for that you know but i think the way that it was successful for me is like to think about what's the lifestyle i want to live right and let's do the things and make the decisions that make that lifestyle happen right and then the body will follow Right. So for me, I wanted to be able to run better. And that meant a lot of Saturday morning long runs or Sunday morning long runs. And what that meant was maybe not so many beers on the night before and maybe not go out to eat after a night of drinking to stop for tacos before I went to bed. You know what I mean? So like figure out what the things that you want. Right. And make your lifestyle choices match that. And then, then your body will be a reflection of the lifestyle that you're living. That's kind of how I approached it. So I know it's not quite that straightforward and simple for everyone. And I've always had kind of a fast metabolism. So like my body responds quickly to change like that. Um, so it's not that quick, but I do think that the concept is that simple or straightforward anyway. Simple is not the right word. So hopefully that answers the question a little bit. Uh, Mila wants to know, am I five out of six stars after Boston? I'll be fourth star. So I only have three right now. So Boston will be my fourth. And then I'm sure it'll get taken away later. But you know, That's another story. Um, Rev KC says, read my first marathon this past Saturday at age 46. Awesome. He ran a 452.05 or Rev ran a 452.05 and going for sub four next year. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations. That's a great way to start. Awesome. Um, Mike is running, says, yo, are you starting to get excited for Boston? Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to feel overwhelmed for Boston, frankly, just because I like there's a lot of planning that I got to do. Um, and I'm worried that I'm just, you know, not going to feel unprepared for stuff. You know, and then every time I travel, I got to this time. I'm not so worried about having so many videos ready to go. Um, but I do have to do a little bit of work ahead of time. So I have videos that release while I'm away, you know, so like this, you know. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm trying to figure that out. Just there's a lot of stuff and it's tax time and I'm always late on tax time. And it, my, I have the nicest accountant in the world. And every year for the last 13 years, I've been telling her this year is going to be different. And I think she's kind of figured out that it's never going to be different. So, you know, it's just stressful. And whenever I get stressful, I don't sleep as well and I don't eat as well. And then that those either of those two things going on always makes my mental health kind of dip a little bit. So I'm, I'm trying to like get through all the, stuff I need to get through so that I can start getting in the right headspace for Boston. Cause it's a big deal, you know? So, but I'm getting, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I th I'm also in the taper too. So it's like a lot of things. Um, Shannon says, Hey, Co uh, what's the deal of the live, live, live stream live 6 PM at a six, just show up, you know, I I'll follow up. Um, but so far, and I don't know, I'll probably get, maybe they're, if they're watching now, maybe I'll get a text, but I'm, if there's, if there's a link to it, that I get, I will put it in the Kofuzi Run Club first, the Strava group. And so everyone that's in the Strava group will get an email. So you guys will be able to sign up first. So that'll be the way to do it. Um, but so far, I, I don't, I can't imagine it's a just show up because I, we can't have too many people. That space is only so big. It's the same. I think it's the same retail space they had last year. So, um, and that's where we're doing it at the A6 shop, A6 house. I forget what they call it. Everyone calls it something different. I think it's the A6 house. Um, so it'll be there, but at 6 p.m. Saturday. That should be fun. I got some new equipment coming in because I'm going to try to make it more complicated than it needs to be. But I'll be testing it out all this week. So that's like another thing I got to do. But so it should be it should be fun. It should be fun. So I'll, I'll post more details as I know. Um, and e Elizabeth D. Molina says, is it bad shakeout run etiquette to wear brands other than the brand hosting the shakeout? I think for most average people, it's not bad etiquette. I think that like uh, for people like me, it kind of is. Here's a story. So um, in Texas for TRE, 
um, Tommy runs and I were running around together and we wanted to go to two shakeout runs. We went to the Puma shakeout run. And then immediately after we went to the um, Saucony one, or maybe it was, the, I think it was the other way around. So like, um, or, yeah, was it? I'm trying to think what shoes was I wearing? Yeah, it was, it was the other way around. Um, but, mm, all right, I got a text from A6, so I'll follow up. But here's the story. So I'm going, I'm at the Saucony shakeout run and I'm there and I'm wearing Puma shoes because I'm going to go to the Puma shakeout next. Um, and I'm there with Tommy and Tommy introduces me to someone who's like, um, like, regional head of marketing for the Americas or someone like this so as an executive and I meet her and I introduce myself and she's like oh hi it's great to finally meet you in person I've been seeing your work it looks great she goes nice shoes by the way and I'm like oh man because I'm wearing Pumas at the Saucony event so I felt like a jerk for that especially because like I was drinking the coffee and I had snacks and food so I'm like eating all the stuff and uh, taking advantage of all the hospitality and and not wearing the stuff. So I think so for someone like me, you know, you kind of um, have to have a you know do that. But I think for for normal normal people, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it at all. I think that it is nice if you can. But you know, I think that's also another reason why a lot of the shakeouts have um, the shoe try-ons. So that way, it kind of guarantees that no matter what people wore to the event, they have like the right shoe on. Um, for when it's a shakeout. So, um, yeah. All right. So, um, there is going to be, so there, I just got a text from A6. So, uh, the shape, the live stream live is going to be small and it's going to be relatively short because it's supposed to be an athlete meet and greet. You know, I'm going to talk to these guys, Ben True and Nico Matanos, two of the fastest marathon men in America or marathon men in America. And, um, and then there'll be a meet and greet time afterwards when it's meet and greet time, then like kind of anyone, I think it'll open up a little bit more, but for like the live stream live, it'll be a little bit more limited, very limited. So keep an eye out for the link in your email. Mm, yeah. And Martha says, it seems pretty absurd for any brand to expect anyone to carry extra shoes to a weekend like this. Yeah. I think that's the other thing too. For Boston, so many people are traveling from so many places. I think that, um, that, that, People are totally going to understand if you don't have like the right shoe on. There's no even no such thing, you know. Um, Travis wants to know Bandit Running. What's the story behind them? Is this a new sports apparel brand? Yeah. So they're ba they're Brooklyn based, but they're but they're going nationwide, and uh, it kind of is like a mix of like run club culture and like streetwear and running culture. So I feel like for me, I like them because it sits like at the intersection of like running and art a little bit. So like running as expression in quite a, bit, a, a different number of levels, you know? And so I, I really like that about it. Plus they usually use my favorite colors, black and gray and white. So like, so they, the apparel appeals to me. Um, and so that's a relatively new. You know, I mean, uh, I think that they have existed for several years, but I feel like they started out as a socks and then they went from socks to like, you know, a full line of apparel and it's like growing and developing into like a, an actual company. So they're, they're moving quickly, it seems, but some good people over there at the brand. Mm, all right. That being said, let's get to some of these boxes. So we had two boxes. So remember, I don't know if you guys remember, last time we were here and you people were, we were talking about like, I don't know, I thought I was getting a pair of Cumulus and I would love to be able to take a look uh, at the Chibuco Max. I don't know where they are. You know, I guess they're coming some point. And then in the live stream, I get a text from uh, one of my contacts at ASICS and they're, and they're like, we just got the tracking notification. It got delivered to your door. And then I, after the live stream, I went upstairs and this was at my door. And then today I got this box over here delivered. And it's also for ASIC. So we're going to take a look at uh, these boxes. So well, let's check them out. All right. This one is heavy. It looks like it could fit two shoes. But I don't, I don't actually. It, it seems kind of dense. So let's see what's in here. All right. It looks like it's two pairs of shoes that's in here. All right. What is this? All right. 
This first one. I think this is I think they sent me the wrong shoe on accident. Is this a new color? The Nimbus I think this is the Nimbus 25 I already have, or is this a new this is the same one I already have. It's a Nimbus 25. But this is I think the one that I have is like cream and white. This is like white and white. This is very pretty. I like this one a lot. It's very much like the secret one. Where is it? It's over here. So this was a secret one that was like uh, unbranded. And this is the new one. Yeah. That's pretty much it. The only thing is there's just an ASICS logo and it says gel Nimbus on the side. So this is definitely different than the one that I already have because the one that I have is like a canvas color up top or like a vanilla up top, which I also really like. This is nice. Ooh, very clean, very clean. I like that a lot. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But that's like that's my. I have three pairs of them already. That's my third pair of them, though. I don't know if I need a third pair. So maybe, maybe we need to do a giveaway. And then. This is nice. I like this a lot. Look at this. The Tribuco Max 2. I like this color too. And I just, you know, I don't know what, it, you know, what's so funny. I think it's so funny that you can always tease a trail runner by saying, oh, tail runners love things that look like their topo, right? Like the topographical maps. But like, I mean, it just looks great. You know, what's not to like? So I just think this look, like this looks nice and grippy. There's no more lace garage in here. The laces are a little bit stretchy. And then it's kind of reminds me of the, um, like the old, like last year's Nimbus, the 24, how puffy it is back here. So that should be nice and comfortable for long days. FF Blast Plus feels lightweight. I mean, for the size of the shoe, you know what I mean? So yeah, Daniel Suvi says, cool details. Eliza says the colorway is fire. Uh, I agree. And uh, James says, what size are you, Co? Send them down here. I'm a nine. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, I think we're probably going to do We'll have to figure that, that one out. Uh, Momentum Unbound says, it's a cool shoe. Got a cool fade. Yeah. You know, I don't really, you know, I, I've said for the longest time, I don't like color fades, but they did it on the Nova Blast 3 and they did it on this. And I'm not mad about it. I kind of actually like it. So I don't know. I think I have to change my mind. I also used to really hate dual density foams. Like if there was two foams in the midsole, I used to hate that. Now I'm okay with it. So I, I, I'm, I'm okay to, I'm happy to evolve. Oh, look, there's gator attachments on this too. You know what? I think I'm going to have to get a gator to try this out. So it goes from there and hooks up onto the front. Like this summer, I think I'm going to try to find it. Do you need gator attachments in the summer? That's more like a winter thing, right? I don't even know. I feel like, but I feel like there, it's time for me to try and use one of these gator attachments. I just feel like I'm going to look like a horse, like a Clydesdale, you know, like when I do that. We'll see. Um, yeah, Travis Manoa says, I just need more feet, Co. I, I do, I guess. I need to be able to run more. Yeah, and Super Unjit says, I'm getting those last three vibes on the Tribuco. I think it's the color fade. I think that's what it is. And Mass Runner says, what percentage of people live close enough to a trail that would require a shoe like that? I mean, yeah, I, I think this is pretty intense. And, um, you know, I am going to run with it on the trails around here in Crystal Lake. But I also think I'm going to try to find, figure out a way to like go on a trip a little bit, get into some hills. And CV76 wants to know what the color of these shoes are. The box says black and golden yellow. I would have said orange. And then yellow on the bottom. That's what I think. It's black, I think. Pretty breathable upper. This will be a lot of fun. I think I'm going to like this. And Alex Herman says, do you wear the same size Nova Blast as Super Blast? I do. All right. Let's get to this other box over here.
All right, they put a tech sheet in here. I don't think I'm supposed to share these tech sheets with you. Although I think this is just straight from the website. Sometimes when you get running, running shoes to review, they'll send a tech sheet. And that's where a lot of people get the information. Like here's the drop and the weight and a lot of the stuff that doesn't go on like the website. And that's just, like information for you. Like they give you kind of talking points if you want them. Um, sometimes people get them. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you have to ask for them, you know, but it gives you stuff like the drop. This says like it's 36 point. And you're not supposed to usually share them, you know, so that's 36.5. Uh, in the heel for women and 37.5 in the heel for men. Oh, I didn't tell you what shoe this is. This is nice. See, okay. See, here's why they sent me the other Cumulus. Because this is the Nova, the Nimbus. This is the Cumulus 25. Looks very different than all the other Cumuluses, but it looks really nice. Look at that. It's, the Yeah. This, I think I'm, I think I'll be wearing this around Boston. This is really nice, and so I think that. Way, no. right. Sorry, I'm making so much noise over here. But the reason why I see now there's a matchy matchy set. You have the Nimbus and the Cumulus. Look at that. See, see that's how that's how you go from like two shoes that are just you know, happen to be in the brand to like a lineup, you know what I mean? So like there's similar design cues, language, color work, um, but there's still very distinct models within the lineup. That's nice. So look at this. It's got like a traditional tongue, not the knit tongue that the Nimbus has. A little bit puffy, but stretchy-ish material. But I feel like this is a little bit not as stretchy as the Nimbus upper. So this is a little bit more like a daily trainer, a little bit more built up, probably can handle a little bit more rough and tumble use. Still very breathable. And uh, yeah, I just love, I like this look back here. It's nice. And I forget where I saw it. Someone had a picture of comparison of the pure gels that were inside these shoes. And there's even the last pure gel in the Cumulus than in the Nimbus 25. So that's exciting for me because I'm not a fan of the gel. But FF Blast Plus in here, a little bit of pure gel, and then this lovely color for this outsole rubber. I just want to eat it, right? Or chew on it for a little bit, like gum. Yeah, and not too much padding back here. So I'm excited to put some miles in this. I think this will get some good casual use as well. I'm loving it. And that's who says like go sniff that element. Not I don't I'm not sniffing it. So so you guys watch wear testers. Chris always does, right? He smells it, which I think is kind of strange. I'm breathing in it. So is, is it breathable? If I could breathe in it, then it's breathable. If I can't take a breath through it, then it's not breathable. That's my test. <laughs> uh, Joe Good says, you know, nice clean color. Keep it tread mount treadmill bound to keep it clean yeah i you know i'm very good at getting shoes dirty so you know i was i was that i was that guy that uh the kid that um intentionally got his shoes dirty like as soon as i got them i was just i, I didn't like the brand like gleaming white new shoes so you know i um i always scuffed them up right away i don't do that anymore now but i know that like how i use them they'll end up getting dirty Um, yeah, Eliza says all the tossed Gatorade cups will stain all of these shoes. Uh, you know, my other Nimbuses, I did get stained with that. You know, we did the traditional uh dyeing, like D Y E, like color dye with like the indigo in Japan. And um, I did drip some of the dye on my other Nimbus shoes, they're not here. Um, so that and you know, I brought a little bit of Japan back home with me. <laughs> Moonlights wants to know if I'm going to test the A6S4. I don't think so. It's a Japan release only, so you couldn't even um, get it in the U.S. I mean, I suppose you could find a way to get it if you really wanted to. Um, but um, yeah, I I didn't try it on. I I held it and I tested it out. Not tested it, but I was like, I had it in hand to look at it when I was at the expo in Tokyo. 
and um you know it's kind of in between like a magic speed 2 and a meta speed uh sky a meta speed edge um at least from the looks of it and from the feel of it uh, it's a dual density foam though so it's ff turbo and i think i'm thinking it's uh ff blast on the other layer and i think a, a plastic um not a carbon fiber but a a slightly less rigid uh plate or shank that's inside and i don't i don't know that i don't know that i need to test that shoe i'm not sure about that mm. Charles Washington says, what's the difference between the Nimbus and the Cumulus? That's a great question. Um, I'll tell you what it is now, and, I, and then I'll tell you what it was, I think. Now, the Nimbus is like the max cushion shoe. So like super chill, long, easy runs, recovery runs. Like when you want maximum comfort, like that's a great shoe to run in. But for like daily training, maybe you have to, a long run or a medium run with some strides or just your regular everyday run. Like the more kind of like just basic stuff that you might do on any given day. That's where you want the cumulus. It's not going to be quite as cushioned, but it's a little bit more willing to pick up the pace. So it's a little bit more of an all arounder. Whereas the Nimbus is more about that kind of like ultimate comfort. So that's the difference between those two shoes. Previously, it was more like one was a daily trainer and one was like a premium daily trainer because max cushion wasn't always like a thing. And so like, um, the Nimbus was just kind of like a nicer version of the Cumulus in like many, many years ago, um, at least in my kind of experience of them. And so like now, like the two shoes to me have a little bit more of a distinct characteristic, but that difference between the two um, and that it makes a little bit more sense to me. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Mm. Dan wants to know how my tracksmith shoes looking. They look fine. Like after the first run I ran in them, they got, they got the toes got all dirty. Cause it was, it wasn't a messy day. I didn't run in the mud in them, but I ran in wet pavement conditions. And like, for some reason, the way that that shoe was designed, water would curl up and over the toe front, like the front of the shoe. And so like my, the tips of my toes and the tracksmith shoes are like, like dirty, very, very dirty even though I didn't run in like dirty conditions. And then like, since then, like they've just kind of, the, the dirtiness has kind of faded a little bit and it's not as like, doesn't look like I dipped my toe into a mud puddle. Um, and they're, they're just kind of like normalized. It's fine. Yeah. Martha says, A6 need a Stratus to complete the three main cloud types. I think that'd be hard though, because it's like, I, I think that's where a lot of the diff, you know, I think that, the confusion between the two lines comes from is that they're both cloud names. And I don't think like the average person, at least at least not the average American um, can be like, okay, well, cumulus is more of this kind of cloud. So clearly that's the daily trainer and the Nimbus is more of this big puffy kind of cloud. So that's clearly the max. You know, I don't think that there's, I don't think that like people know their clouds <laughs> well enough. I don't think I know my clouds well enough uh, to do that. So I think that's what makes it hard. Mm. Let's see what else we got here. Um, Martha says, after that comparison, go, uh, I mean, the com comparing the Cumulus and the Nimbus, I'm definitely going to go with the Cumulus next time, unless the Nova Blast fulfills my longer and needs 100%, which it probably does. I think that the, the Nova Blast may, Martha, but I think also the Cumulus could work for you too, because it is, I think, I, I haven't, now granted, I just un uh, unbox this now, so I don't know, but generally the Cumulus is a little bit more firm than the Nimbus is. And so I, get the sense that this will um, probably suit your preferences just a little bit more. Mm. Uh, Christian Perez says, any shoe recommendation for helping over pronation? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can give you a couple of recommendations, but I will say that I generally think that people overthink it too much. Um, unless it's something that like your orthopedist or your physical therapist is recommending that you do. Like, I think a lot of people probably don't need to be in it. Um, and what people are concerned about with overpronation may just be a case of maybe you need new shoes. 
Um, uh, just need a fresh pair. And, um, I think that a lot of times as people get stronger and, and more fit, um, a lot of those problems tend to resolve themselves a little bit more. And so that's kind of my general, uh, take on it. I'm not a physical therapist or a physician, um, but that's my general take on it. And maybe that's partially informed by the fact that I really don't like stability shoes. Um, but shoes that I would really generally look for are ones that have a little bit wider of a base. And what I mean by wider is like on certain parts. So here I'm looking at the cumulus. This is a neutral shoe. It's not a stability shoe by any means, but like it's see how it's like it's wide right here. It's got a lot of space for you to land on. That wider space is going to make it so that you're not curling in so much and also flares out at the heel. Same thing. So that way there's just more for you to land on. So there's less likely that you'll kind of be tipping over and all around. So we're looking at this. Nimbus too. This Nimbus just stays wide the kind of like the entire way, even wider up at the uh, the kind of pads of the feet, but it, all through the arch, it stays nice and wide. And that wider landing pad for you is going to help make it so that way you're not unduly curling in. Now, everyone's foot should curl in a little bit. That's what's called pronation. I think a lot of people confuse pronation with over pronation, but, um, you know, looking for shoes that have a little bit wider of a base is going to help. So like, you know, I do think that the Nimbus kind of has some of that. I recently reviewed the Forever Run Nitro, the Puma shoe. That one's really wide and is kind of like the new kind of stability, which isn't, um, is a shoe that I can actually run in. I don't, I'm not mad at that one. So that's another good one, but it has a lot of those same concepts of, um, a foam that's not overly squishy and, um, has a wide platform for you to land on. So that way, even if the forces, even if you're not landing exactly correctly every time, the shoe has enough there to absorb some of that extra impact. Hopefully that makes sense. Mm. Kevin Bandy says, could you counter over pronation by landing further from your center? Yeah, see, that's this is where I think things get kind of like... Um, uh, go sideways really fast. Right. So, um, I think that people like to kind of try to correct their stride when they're running a lot. And I think that typically leads to a lot of inefficient movement, which will, I think quick, quickly lead to injury. So you have to be careful for that. If you want to try and do some of those corrections, I think the best way to do it is to do drills immediately before a workout because the drills will reinforce kind of like overemphasized movement muscle movements kind of teaching your body like this is the way that i want to move high knees kicking your butt you know um lifting up from the from the um from the quad like those kinds of things when you're doing like toy soldiers high knees butt kicks all those kinds of things and then to do that immediately into your workout then when you're trying to move quickly your your body has like oh this is how we just moved let's continue moving in that way and so you get double reinforcement some people like to do drills after a run and I think that's backwards. So like that, that's kind of like one way to do it. And, you know, I think that like what C-Town found is saying, like most people find their running form by just running is kind of like a way of, of what I'm saying is that like your body finds a way to naturally find the most uh, efficient way that is capable of moving given its current level of strength, right? And it's predominant way of moving. Now, as you start running more and getting more fit and do things like glute activations and waking up those butt muscles and doing your mobility work, your body begins to be able to move in other kinds of ways that it maybe previously couldn't handle. And so then your body, again, continues to make itself more efficient. And so like it kind of, you know, like doing drills is helpful, but like the running more and getting stronger by running more is usually like in my opinion, I don't know. And again, I'm not a medical professional, but like that, yeah, I feel like that's the correct order of horse and cart. If you ask me, um, momentum unbound says I used to try to correct my stride ended up with an injury. Now I just run when whatever feels natural, but I feel my stride is actually improving as a result without really trying. Yeah. That's kind of where, where I'm at. Um, and Matthias Ventus says, 100% agree, Co. I think that's why we've seen a structural change in stability shoes, the shoe companies. Um, I've heard foot doctors say a much, as much about shoes correcting stride and form. Yeah, so I mean, I think that, you know, I think we're figuring things out 
uh, new things out as we go. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, Sober Gummy says, I used stability for a long time and solely worked in neutral shoes until I was wearing neutral more than stability, now exclusively neutral shoes. I did that over the course of about three months. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. You know what I found is really interesting is that, um, you know, I love to ask professional athletes or I love it when podcasters interview athletes and ask them what like their like a week's worth of shoes is for them. And I think it's amazing that as much as I really detest stability shoes. Um, most pros usually have one stability shoe in their lineup and it's just doesn't make any sense to me. Like I remember an old interview by like of Gwen Jorgensen and she's like, her favorite Nike shoe is the structure. And I'm like, the what? The Nike, that stability shoe. It's like her favorite shoe that and like the zoom elite. I'm like, oh, what was it? Yeah, it was the zoom elite. Do you guys remember that shoe? Am I, remember, am I saying the name right? I don't remember. And then I was just listening to a podcast with Nico Montañez, and one of his favorite shoes is the Cayano. And I'm like, the guy is a 209 marathoner, beautiful stride, and um, one of his favorite shoes is a heavy stability shoe? I don't understand that. I mean, he says he likes the Nova Blast as well. But I'm like, the Cayano? Really? I'm like, okay. There's, I don't know what it is about that, but there's, there, like, pros, there's, I don't know. I don't know what, what, what I'm missing, but they seem to like them. So I don't think there's anything wrong with them. Um, and, like, uh, I think Dina Castor and Ailish McColgan both really love the DS Trainer from Asics, which I don't think is a stability shoe, but it's a very firm shoe. And to me, it kind of feels like a stability shoe. So... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it's about. It. Fast runners still do like the stability shoes. So I, just, I guess, you know, whatever whatever you like is what you like. Mm. Travis says, when I first started running, I definitely needed the shoes with extra support, like Brooks Adrenaline, Saucony Hurricane. But as the legs gained strength, I was able to get a neutral shoe. That makes sense, too. I could see that. I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong. And like I just said, the pros seem to love stability shoes. Um, but, yeah, it's okay to have for a little while. But I also think that, like, you don't, you might not always need them, like, like uh, Travis is saying. So Bergami says, when I heard Nico Montagna say he liked the Cayano, I almost fell out of my chair. I mean, me too. I'm just like, why, why, what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to ask him about that on sat on Saturday. So I'm going to be like, for real? No, for real though, for real. <laughs> um, my nephew loves the Cayano. Um, I bought him a bunch of... When he started getting running track, he, he's graduating from high school this year, this May. Um, he's one of the reasons why I can't go to the do the tiger claw. But anyway, I still love him. It's okay. But um, when he started running track, I bought him a pair of uh, Hyperion Tempos. And then um, he bought himself another pair of those. And then he also bought himself a pair of Cayanos. And he said he really liked them. And I was like, you do? Okay, I mean it's a good shoe, and it's it, lo it looks better than ever. I just don't like stability shoes, you know. Daniel Suvi says, "I wonder if Kipchoge likes any odd shoes." Uh, I don't know. I mean, he certainly has preferences, you know. I mean the 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 rumor, or at least the the marketing story, was that the turbo was developed so. Um, Kipchoge could have a daily trainer he could run in every day and I, for whatever reason the Pegasus wasn't it so like I remember I remember that being a like a marketing pitch I don't know if that's actually true or not but like remember they did the Pegasus turbo release in uh in, in Japan somewhere like the people that got in like um like when you got the in I didn't get the invite but when you got the invite you got like a postcard with like latitude and longitude on it and it was just some place in japan and that's where the event was and i think shalane flanagan was there and kipchoge was there and that's where they unveiled the the peg turbo 
So, I mean, there's something about the Pegasus he doesn't love, at least according to that marketing story. So. Mm -hmm. Alex Baker wants to know, do you have a race strategy for Boston? Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I did a, uh, thing with, um, Marcus Brown and, uh, Peter Bromka over on relay, um, uh, which is the Patreon thing that we're all kind of doing together. A bunch of us, uh, patreon.com slash relay. Anyway, uh, we talked a little bit about it. He's run it, I think eight times now. Uh, and Marcus ran it the horrible year, horrible weather year. And, uh, I was like, guys, you know, I've heard, I've heard both of them talk about the course in detail. And I'm like, you guys are giving me too much detail. Can you help a person who can remember like three things at a time, like some tips on how to approach Boston, you know? And they were basically like, all right, it's a little bit of downhill and mostly fat for the first 16 miles, hilly for four or five miles, and then mostly downhill the rest of the way. I'm like, okay. Okay. So I think my strategy is going to be to run uh be run about my fitness pace for marathon effort for the first 16 miles and not be too scared if the number is a little bit on the fast side or even a little bit on the slow side um along the way because there are some significant downhills like the first mile is is very downhill um and then there's a really big downhill right into mile 16. i think the biggest downhill of the course is right then and so like, I think I'm going to be okay with, if I'm going a little bit too fast, I'm a pretty good downhill runner, I think. Um, and I'm not that worried about trashing the quads doing the downhills. Um, and some other people have mentioned that like, you know, no, who was I listening to that was saying like, they weren't willing to go so far as saying that CIM is a harder course, but CIM is an underestimated course and not all that entirely different than the way Boston is. So I've like, I feel like I, I think I kind of know what I'm getting into and I am very comfortable with my marathon effort. So marathon effort for 16 miles. And then once we hit the Hills, each Hill roughly is about a hundred feet high and about a half mile long. It's not exactly, but that's how it, it's an easy way for me to remember it as someone that can't remember many things in their head at once. And so the way I see it is if I run two minutes a mile slower up the Hill for half a mile, that's going to be a one minute penalty for each of those hills. I don't think it'll be quite that much, but even if I take that long, that'll be a four minute Boston marathon penalty from what I could run on a flat course. And I'm okay with that. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. And then hopefully I can at least maintain my marathon effort or pace for the last 10 K. So that's what I'm thinking. I lose four minutes in the hills, but then have a good day. Otherwise that's, kind of where i'm at i don't know if that's going to make any sense at all but that's the rough game plan so anyone that wants to join that 255 group corral one wave one corral six that's that's going to be the plan <laughs> uh yeah sean Devin says the plan is run fast don't bonk there you go there you go Gary Howland says, just wanted to wish you all the best from the UK for Boston. Entered my first ultra today, 50 miles in 2024. Awesome, Gary. It's going to be fun. You know, I was looking, I was trying to look for some 50 milers to do here um, in the summer. But there aren't that many that were feasible for me to do. So I might do another 50K this summer. That's what I'm thinking. Hmm. Frank says his strategy is 715 to 720 for to mile 16, 740 to 750 to mile 20, and whatever I got for the rest. There you go, Frank. Because I think some of those in between each of the Newton Hills, it's not flat. It's kind of down each one overall. So I, I don't know where I'm going to end up. So Shannon says, I've never heard CIM compared to Boston. <laughs> you heard it here first, but... Um, uh, cause you know how sometimes people say like, you know, the first half of CIM is a little bit, is trickier than it looks. It looks like it's all downhill, but it's rolling. And there's a couple of inclines that I would call big hills, 
there's that one, I don't know what town you're in, but like it curls up a whole bunch and it's a long uphill. You know what I'm talking about? There's like a big shopping center in there. I don't know. There's, and then there's another part where it's like a downhill into a long gradual uphill. And it's a pretty quiet road, tree line street. It's wide though. It's like six lanes wide. I don't know. So there's a couple of, I think, substantial hills there. Not to say that those are comparable to Newton Hills, but I think it's comparable to like the first half of Boston. Adam says the crowds at the start will keep you in check. Keep it easy on the big downhill into Newton because you almost immediately go into climb after. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a lot of the advice that I've been getting too. And I'm yeah, that's the other thing is like I'm not going to worry too much about speed in the beginning because I feel like as long as I'm lined up in the right spot, I'll be around people doing about the same thing. You know, so I'm like, I'm going to be congested and that'll be a good speed limiter. That worked actually, I think, re uh, really well for me in Tokyo. A little bit, I mean, I was a little, little bit slower than I think I needed to, but my first mile in Tokyo was like 750, maybe eight minutes. So like a more than a minute off of marathon pace. So like uh, that, that was okay. It was a good way to kind of ease into the race. And I think help kind of like prevent my race day adrenaline from like activating too many systems you know my theory is like if you go out too hard in that first mile your body just goes from like standing around shivering in the corral so like working a little bit too hard then it's like all right aerobic systems activate anaerobic systems on like start emergency systems turn it every everything on we need everything you know and i think that just sets your body into a weird metabolic state you know so i think easing into it is a really good way to do it that's why I don't love like a big downhill start. Like I don't love the start at CIM. It's a big downhill for the first mile. And I'm not sure that I love the way that this Boston course starts out. You know what course I love the way it starts out? Tunnel marathon, light at the end of the tunnel. You kind of run around the parking lot and then you run through a, a tunnel, which is like, I think flat. I don't, it's pitch black. So like I, there might be a slight downhill grade, but you don't really start to hit the downhill till like after like mile and a half. And then it's a like a 2% downhill the entire time. It's so nice. Until like mile 22 or 23, maybe 24. This is just really nice. But I like I like to start out a little bit flat, not downhill. Because I want to save the downhill for when I'm ready to open up, you know. <laughs> Eric Vaj wants to know how many gels and at what miles? I'm gonna bring um I'm gonna bring six gels take one every four miles that's that's what i've been doing for a long time now i don't always get that sixth gel in um i did in tokyo i didn't at cim i didn't at new york or chicago so like i think i did at grandma's i didn't at la no i did at la and, you know sometimes i do it sometimes i don't but i bring six gels with me and Adam says, you won't lose four minutes on the hills, maybe two at the most. I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Hold my beer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I think if I'm having a good day, I, I'll lose less than four minutes on the hills. But if I lose four minutes on the hills and I'm running 255 pace otherwise, that means I'm going to come in at a 259 at Boston. Well, that's a pretty, really good day. You know, that's not something that I'm going to shake a stick at. So like that, I'm just trying to keep everything in perspective, you know, being like the hills, it's okay to lose time on the hills. It's an uphill, you know, I wouldn't expect a pro athlete to run the same time in Chicago and Boston. I would expect them to be slower because there's hills and I have to give myself the same grace. You know, that's kind of like my main ultimate point. But I, the math I'm saying is like, if I'm trashed up that fourth hill and I'm going 840 a mile, I'm okay with that even for the entire hill, you know? So, um, yeah, JC says, I watched the John Hancock video. It's from a car at the Boston course. It's four-year-old, but a good watch. I've already watched it like two or three. Peter Bromko told me about that one. He's like, you got to watch it. I'm like, okay. He's like, turn the volume off because like the narration gets annoying. The first time it's nice because you hear from Dez, you get to hear from a Tatiana McFadden, you know? Uh, you get to hear from other uh, like um, like Boston luminaries. And so it's pretty cool. Uh, now I do turn the volume off on it, but I've been doing it just to get an idea of like what the hills look like and stuff. And so 
Um, yeah, they're no joke, but I do enjoy watching that one. Um, you know what's interesting though, and we'll end on this note today, is at the end of that John Hancock video, you know, they uh, they talk, like Ryan Hall tells you, and then like you're coming to the finish and it's the best finish in running, all this stuff. And then there's like nice music and like slow motion footage of all these runners crossing the finish line from the official like course preview video by John Hancock, their previous sponsor. In one of the last shots, you can see a dude crossing the finish line with a selfie stick, Someone's like a GoPro on a selfie stick. And I'm just like, oh, okay, all right. There it is. Uh, I'm not saying that means it's okay, but I'm just saying like I'm not the only one. Well, of course I'm not the only one. They made a rule about it. But, you know, it's just funny to watch. I don't know if anyone else picked up on that. That's like the th the most prominent thing that I remember from, from watching the, the race, the course preview video. But, yeah, that's going to be it. All right. So uh, that's going to be it for today. Uh, you know, I meant to have the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro video out today. I got delayed. We had some Easter celebrations. And so family time uh, took some precedence. So that video will come out tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow we'll do another live stream, same time as today, 1 p.m. Central time. And uh, hopefully uh, I got some more boxes to unbox. So, you know, I think I like doing kind of like one a day. I kind of like that. So we got one from, uh, we'll take a look at a package from Janji from tomorrow. All right, guys. So I'll see you then. In the meantime, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.